Welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this Christmas Sunday. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship, we welcome you. We are so glad that you are joining with us in online worship today. I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining with us for the first time. We're so excited that you've chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and I wanna encourage you and everyone who's joining in today to fill out our contact form. The link to that is in the comment section, and there's a special QR code on your screen as well. Please use that so that we can uh, connect with you, get you our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about upcoming opportunities to connect and serve and be connected together in ministry and know that there's also a place on that contact form for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So I just uh, hope that everyone will use that contact form today. Now, when we do join together in online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. This isn't just a weird random video that you are watching today. It is worship. It is worship of God. It is worship with one another. So we covenant to participate and to bless. Our covenant to participate means that we're going to do the things that we're doing together. So stand up and sing when it's time to sing and pray when it's time to pray and really pay attention to the words and to everyone who's leading and just really fully participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means the way we're in the comment section, the way that we may be gathered with people, People as we're having this worship time, uh, the way we're sending this out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. Again, we are so glad that you're joining with us in worship today. Welcome. Join us in singing. There's a song in the air. Good morning. I am Sue Landgreeb, a member at Douglas Avenue. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Light of the world, shine in our lives today. As we worship, give us the eyes of Simeon and the faith of Anna, that we may see the promise of your salvation. As we worship with hope and expectation, give us the spirit of your Son, that we too may grow in strength and increase in wisdom. As we worship, Keep our hearts and minds open to receive your love and peace. Enable each of us to be people of joy and hope as we share with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Jesse Kleinschmidt. I'm back at work. Peace be with you. Hi, we're the Praise Band. Peace, Peace be with you. Good morning. It's good to be with you. My name is Frank Beard and I'm the resident bishop of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference. I'm also a wayward attender of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I haven't been for a while 
but I will return. I will be back. And I uh, look forward to joining uh, with you in worship and celebration. And of course, when we can eat again together, I look forward to that uh, as well. My wife, Melissa, and me, we uh, look forward to uh, being with you. And we are so grateful and so thankful uh, for the ministry that you all engage in. And just want to say, hope that things go well today, that you sense the presence of Jesus and the peace of God be with you. You know, it just wouldn't be worship without small talk. And it's time for small talk. So I invite all the children who may be joining with us to get in really close to your device and to your screen so that you can see and hear everything that is going on with small talk today. It is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb. And you just do not want to miss a moment of this small talk. Hello everybody, it is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his assistant Cohen. And can you imagine church without music or Christmas time without music? It is such an important part of our worship experience. But Laud has been a little unhappy this holiday season because he didn't get to share his great talents with us musically. So today we're gonna to give Laud the opportunity to share his musical talents with us. Are you ready, Laud? All right, I give you Laud the Lamb and his rendition of Jingle Bells. Wow, Laud, that was amazing. Yes, okay, applaud, uh, yes, very, very good. We all have music, musical talent that we can share with the church. Yes, very good, very good, buddy. Whether it's singing or playing an instrument, remember to share your musical talent with God and everyone. Bye, guys. I'm Nancy Gillespie, and I'm a longtime member here at Douglas Church. Joining me today is my stepsister, Gail Schneider. She's visiting for Christmas from North Carolina, and together we're going to be giving to this morning's scripture reading. Our reading from the Bible is Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for, for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. 
When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Amen. Join us in singing, Sing We Now of Christmas. Christmas, everyone. I pray that your celebrations are and continue to be joyful and restful and that you are connecting with God's love made real in Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. One of the best things about Christmas, at least in my opinion, is the music. There is just something about Christmas that makes people want to sing. And not just in worship services with church either. People sing at school, people sing at work, people sing at parties. Sometimes people even go caroling outside, which is certainly right now one of the safest ways to share in singing together in the living of these days. But if you think about it, it's really kind of weird for a group of people to sing together. These days, anyway, it's not as much a regular occurrence in our culture, except for people who participate in worship services. There are a few other times when people might join together in singing, like at sporting events, where people might join in singing the national anthem together. Or if you're a baseball fan, singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game together. If you're a Boston Red Sox fan, then you sing together Sweet Caroline at that venerable Fenway Park. I'm sure that the Cubs and Cardinals fans do some kind of singing too, but I don't know what that is. I digress. Anyway, Christmas definitely has its own lexicon of song, both sacred and secular. Take a moment to think about it right now. What are some of your favorite Christmas songs? Go ahead and put them in the comment section if you would like to. I can tell you that in my household, our Christmas playlist is widely varied. We love singing the carols that we always sing together in worship. We also tend to have a lot of throwback Motown and soul and swing Christmas albums like the Jackson 5 and the Supremes and Ella Fitzgerald that we enjoy listening to and singing. My husband, Curtis, his favorite Christmas song may possibly be Santa Claus is Coming to Town by Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. He certainly belts it out like it's his favorite. My daughter, Joy, she favors the Beach Boys' Little St. Nick. My daughter, Karis, loves Run Run Rudolph by Chuck Berry. And there are so many that I love, but I do love singing along with Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. What are some of your favorites? And what are some of your favorite Christmas carols that we sing together in worship? O Come All Ye Faithful, Joy to the World, Silent Night? Go ahead and put those in the comment section too. I think that sometimes we just kind of plow through the carols that we sing together in worship during the Christmas season. And unfortunately, we don't, I think, always listen, really listen to the words. We may certainly enjoy them, but sometimes it seems that we get kind of sucked up in the nostalgia of singing them, remembering Christmas's past or loved ones and experiences. 
or we just revel in the simple joy of the beautiful melodies, or the fun of lifting our voices with others in song and the camaraderie that gives us. And there is so absolutely nothing wrong with any of those things. You go right ahead. But I think it is good to stop for a minute and pay closer attention to the words of these carols that we sing. Our Christian songs at Christmas contain a powerful message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. It's a message way beyond a baby born in a stable 2,000 years ago. These carols and songs speak clearly a message into our world today. Like Away in a Manger. It feels like a sweet little cradle song. At least that's the way most of us tend to think about it. But it's also a powerful prayer for Jesus to stay close by, to bring love and blessing to all of God's children, all of God's children, and to prepare us in this life for the life to come. How about good Christian friends rejoice? We'll be singing this one together toward the end of our worship today. It has a returning phrase that you sing with each verse, news, news. The lyrics go on powerfully to proclaim that good news, that because of Jesus' birth as a living, breathing human being, we need not fear the grave, because Jesus has been born to save us all, all meaning all, from pain and sin and death. Joy to the world, well, that's a personal favorite of mine. You can probably sing many uh, verses of that one from memory. This song is an incredible proclamation that Jesus has come to save not just people, but the entire world from the grip of sin and death, bringing resurrection life to all of creation. Again, all of creation. What child is this? Well, that answers the question that this, this, isn't just a baby, but the anointed Savior of the world for both the lowly peasant and the earthly king, the Savior to be enthroned in the hearts of all. One of my very favorite Christmas carols is, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. This was one of the first social gospel hymns written in the United States. It was composed during the time of unrest before the Civil War. Its central theme contrasts the plague of war with the song of the angels and looks to the day when the whole world sings back the song of peace, sings it right back to the heavenly host. One of the verses of this great hymn that didn't make our United Methodist hymnal is particularly on point here. It goes like this. But with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long, Beneath the angel strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong, and man, at war with man, hears not the love song which they bring. O oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. Let those with ears listen and understand. All of these Christmas songs are fairly recent in the larger scheme of things. Even since the very first Christmas, song has been an integral part of the proclamation of Jesus' coming and Jesus' birth. Of course, the angels sing glory to God in the highest and peace among those whom God favors as they proclaim Jesus' birth to the shepherds. But song fills the preparation for Jesus' birth as well. Jesus' mother, Mary, lifts a revolutionary, justice-filled song in response to learning of her pregnancy and that her child would save his people. We read this in worship last week. It's found at Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. Early on, Mary's song became a regular hymn of the church entitled Magnificat. Mary sings out and asks all of us to sing with her about how God shows God's strength and faithfulness as the lowly are lifted up and the powerful are brought down, the hungry are filled and the rich are sent away empty, that the world is turned upside down with God's revolution of love and mercy and justice. The Song of Zechariah has also become a standard hymn of the church and did so early on. At his son's birth, Zechariah bursts into song, proclaiming the faithful goodness of God and the hope and promise God is bringing to the world through Jesus Christ. 
In today's reading from the Bible, we hear how Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus have come to the temple in Jerusalem for Mary's ritual cleansing following childbirth. They are met by the righteous Simeon, who has been promised by God that he will not die until he has laid eyes on the Messiah. Simeon is guided by the Holy Spirit to come to the temple, and when he sees Jesus, well, what does he do? He bursts into song, of course. Simeon sings his thankfulness for God's faithfulness in showing him with his own eyes God's great salvation made real in the world with Jesus, a salvation for all people, for all people. This song of Simeon was also adopted early on by the church and is called the Nunc Dimittis, which is Latin for, now you are dismissing. And if that weren't enough, at the end of our reading from the Bible today, we hear of the prophet Anna, who also sang out a proclamation at seeing the Messiah, the child Jesus. Sadly, though, her song has not been handed down to us in the Bible. But I imagine following in the pattern of the women's songs that we do have from the Bible, it would be a powerful proclamation of God's love, mercy, and justice. We are simply surrounded by music and song during this Christmas season because there is just something about the birth of God's Son, the Savior of the world, that inspires song. We have seen from our songs found in the Bible and the songs we sing together in this season that they are powerful, creative, inspiring proclamation of the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. These songs are also a gift from God in and of themselves. This music is a way that we celebrate that which is so joyous, so powerful, so life-changing that we can't just talk about it, we have to sing about it. Our Christmas songs are a way that we express the wonderful mystery of God's incarnation, of God taking on flesh and blood in the person of Jesus to bring us and everyone love, grace, healing, and redemption up close and personal. This is good news that our world, our country, our neighborhoods, that we, that we desperately need to not only hear, but to be blessed with right now. So sing on, continue to sing it, and let's pray it and act on it too. Amen. Please join us in singing, Love Came Down at Christmas. I am part of the mission committee. I would like to have you enter into prayer with me today, please. We enter into your presence today, the day after the celebration of your birthday, with the energy we have of gratitude of a God with us. I was marvel at the thought of you being an infant, starting just like we did, an infant with being so dependent on the care and decisions of other those who take care of you. This concept of you as a baby, and then the wonder of Simeon and Anna who recognized you as the salvation of the nation and a light for the revelation to the Gentiles. How anyone saw that in a baby can be only explained by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for all the process of this divine story. Thank you that these processes still function and have power today. That you are the same God who gives, reveals, and works in our world today. And you do it so open-handed 
and extravagantly. Please place us where you want us, even if it is uncomfortable. Please give us an open mind to worship you and give us songs to sing like you did Mary. May we sing with the shepherds as the angels sing, glory to God in the highest. Today, right now, we sing our prayer, our praises for all the care given by you to those who are watching relatives and watching children and watching those in need. By your Holy Spirit, reveal to us how we can be your servants to bless those we meet throughout our days, by phone, in our business, or passing on the street. Open our hearts, open our minds, and put us in the right place at the right time to be your servant. Amen. And would you join us together and I will pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for all of the ways you give yourself so generously into our ministries here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We encourage you to be continue to be generous in your financial giving. You can make gifts to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church online using our online giving portal. The link to that is in the comments and there's a special QR code for that as well. You can send in checks to our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church office. And if you'd like to set up an automatic giving either with your financial institution or with ours, just let us know in the church office and we'll help you. Thank you for all of those ways that you generously give. And we have some special offerings that are going on through the end of 2021 that we encourage you to support as well. Our 2021 Christmas mission offering is going to Helping Hands of Springfield, which serves people experiencing homelessness in our area, as well as Chaddock's Children's Home. You can give through our online giving, just choose Christmas mission offering, or with a check, just send that in and please put Christmas offering in the memo line. We are also receiving a special offering for our end of the year, Raise the Roof, to support the facilities of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church that house our powerful life-changing ministries. You can give online to that, just choose Raise the Roof in the drop-down menu, or put Raise the Roof in the memo line of a check that you could send in. And please remember as we come to the end of 2021 that in order for financial gifts to be credited to this year, you'll need to have those made or postmarked by December 31st, 2021. Again, thank you for your generous heart and your generous giving. Please join us in singing Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online Christmas Sunday worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's been such a joy to have you. We hope that uh, your whole experience has been wonderful and meaningful and powerful, that you will continue to join with us for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary. On Sunday, January 2nd, we'll be having one worship in the sanctuary at 1030. Uh, following that on into January, we'll uh, resume with our worship services at 815 and 1030. And we all always, of course, have our online worship service that you are welcome to join with us. I encourage you again to use that contact form if you have not done so, so that we can connect with you, get to know you a bit. Remember that there's a place there for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So please do use that today. And as you go into your day, go knowing that the God who loves you and who has created you is calling you forth into song, that Jesus Christ is worth singing about, that the Holy Spirit wants to lift that song from your heart and send it out into the world to proclaim that good news. So go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Mm -hmm.